Hi, welcome to Pioneer Training's VBA tutorial series. Today we're going to be talking about the range offset command. To get the most out of this video, you should be familiar with Excel and have some familiarity with Excel VBA. Notice that our screen is divided. On the left, we have Excel up and running. On the right, we've got the Excel VBA editor with some code already written. We're going to be using the debug toolbar to step through our code. When you run the debug toolbar, you'll notice that the line that's going to be executed next is highlighted in yellow. This video uses Excel 2010, although you can use this information in Excel 2007 through Excel 2016. The range command in Excel lets you specify a specific cell or a range of cells in order to read the value, write a value, change the fill, the font color, and a host of other properties of that, of that cell or range. When you use VBA to do various tasks, such as processing a list or working with various cells, selecting each cell in turn is cumbersome especially if you're working with a list and you have to select first column, second column, third column, and so on. The offset command makes this process much more efficient. The range offset method allows you to specify a cell that is so many rows and so many columns from another cell. You can use the range statement or other statements to specify the starting cell for the offset method. Let's get started. In the first example, you'll notice that the first line of code says range D5 select, meaning we're going to select cell D5. Next, we're going to select the range E7 through F26. Next, we're going to put the value Jane into a range name called first name that we have previously created. And next, we're going to put the value 3.14159 into cell D6. Notice in both of these cases that when we added a value to the cell, because we didn't say select, we did not move our cell pointer. The active cell, in this case, is still that range E7 through F26. Finally, we can put a formula into a cell. The formula, in this case, R6C4 divided by 2, column 4 translates to column D, and R6 translates to row 6. So when we put it in, it's going to say D6 divided by 2. And if I look at it, that's exactly what it does say. It shows up as an absolute value, but that's exactly what we wanted. Okay. Next, we're going to use, we're going to use a keyword called active cell. The active cell key, keyword is simply whatever cell is selected. In our case right now, it's C7. Now it's I7. Now it's E16. The active cell is another keyword that's incredibly helpful in processing in Excel. First thing we'll do is we'll select cell F15. We'll put the value start into the active cell. Next, we're going to use the offset command to go two rows down and three columns to the right and in that cell, we're going to put the value stop. Notice we're not actually going to move there. We're simply going to put the value stop. Two rows down is row 17. Three columns over is 1, 2, 3, column I. And we're going to put the value stop in I17. When using the offset method, you specify the row and column number. A positive row number moves down the sheet. A positive column number moves to the right. A negative row number moves up the sheet, and a negative column number moves to the left. You'll see that here. First, we'll select cell D15, and we'll specify negative three rows, positive one column. In other words, we'll go up three rows to the right one column. Next, we'll specify positive one row, negative two columns. We'll move down one row, and to the left two columns. Finally, if you don't want to move a row or a column, you use a zero in place of a number. So in this example, we're going to move down one row, 
but we're not going to change the column. Okay, let's put this to use a little. If you look at the list that's up on screen, it's a list of names and addresses that we probably have gotten from a CSV file and imported into Excel. We've turned it into a table, which is why it's colored the way it is. But you'll notice that the zip codes have been converted first into numbers, and then any zip code with the leading zero has had the leading zero stripped off. We want to change that. So there are a number of ways to do that. What we've chosen to do is to, whenever we have a four-digit zip code, we're going to add an apostrophe and a, a leading zero. The apostrophe will convert the number into text, and the leading zero will not be truncated. So let's go through the processing. Notice we've created three different variables, first name, last name, and zip code. And what we're going to be doing is reading the value in various cells into these va variables, and then writing these variables next to the list. Clearly, in your own code, you do different processing, but this is a convenient way to see exactly what's going on. This code uses two other VBA statements. First, the while loop will process a series of steps until a condition is met. In our case, the code will test whether the active cell is blank. As long as it is not blank, the loop will process our list until it reaches the WN statement. When the active cell value is blank, the code will jump to the next line after the WN statement. Second, the code will use an if-then-else statement to test the length of the zip code. The if statement will test a condition, in our case whether the length of the zip code is four characters. If the test is true, it will execute the code after the keyword then. If it is false, it will execute the code after the keyword else. The if-then-else statement ends with an end-if statement. So, step one, select range A2, the first row of data. While that cell is not equal to blank, in other words, while there's still data to be processed, we're going to step through our code. The active cell value is going to be put into the value string first name. We're going to offset one column, and the value in the same row, one column to the right, we'll put into last name. And the value that's five columns to the right, same row, we're going to put into zip code. So first name becomes carry, last name becomes Vertera, and string zip code becomes 1075. Now we're going to process the data. In seven columns to the right, we're going to put the value that's in first name. Eight columns to the right, we're going to put the value that's in last name. And now we're going to test the length of the zip code variable. If the zip code variable's length is 4, then it means it's had its leading zero truncated, and we're going to add an apostrophe followed by a leading zero. If it's not 4, then it's either a straight zip code or it's a zip plus 4, and either way, we're simply going to just put the apostrophe in front of it. In this case, the test so says that we've got a four-character zip code. We're going to prepend the apostrophe zero to it. Notice that the green triangle tells us that Excel has discovered the number is stored as text and will allow us to convert that to a number if we want. We are not going to do that. Next, we're going to offset by one row and repeat the loop. The active cell value is not equal to blank, so the current cell value goes into first name, the value one column over goes into last name, and the value five columns over goes into zip code. Now we write those values, Emily, Wilson, and now the length of the zip code in this case is five, so all we're going to do is prepend that apostrophe to it. Go down one row, keep processing. Again, the value is not blank, so the active cell value goes into the first name. The value that's one column to the right goes into last name. The value that's five columns to the right goes into zip code. And now we'll go write the data. Seven columns over, we'll put what's in first name. Eight columns over, we'll put what's in last name. And then we'll test the length of the zip code. Since the length of this zip code is, in fact, four characters, we'll add our apostrophe zero to it. 
move down one row and keep processing. Uh, in the interest of watching it process, we'll simply run the rest of it. Notice that we've stopped at the last row. All the uh, uh, zip codes have had either a leading zero app appended when necessary or simply the, the value has been put in, put in there. Finally, this active cell offset basically says when we're done processing, go down a row. If we leave that off, the code is going to process the same row until we get tired of watching it and press control break. Thank you very much, and I hope this clears up the use of offset.